Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm going to show you how the procedural generator script that we built for my new game is working in Unity. I'm going to show you the inspector that we created, how you can actually customize some of the themes and how we're going to be using it for our new game. So let's go into Unity and let's check it out. All right, guys, so here's a scene that we have created that shows you the procedural generator component. So let me show you how the scene works. If I hit play and I let it load, it's going to create procedural generator building. So I can hit space and it's going to randomize the next building. You can see that's that's much of a taller structure and thinner and hit space again. You can see that that looks completely different. You can hit space one more time. And, and honestly, I can stare at this all day because it's really, really fun to see how, you know, the, the variety of buildings that I'm getting as I hit space. So every, every piece in here is customizable. So the way that the, the component works is I can actually tell it how the balcony is going to look like. So we have what we call, you know, a regular balcony. We have more of a roof balcony, which has a roof, obviously. We also have doors, we also have walls, and in each of those component components can be customizable. We also have a theme that we can actually set up that allow us to inject themes into different buildings. So if I hit space one more time, see that's much of a, you know, it's not as tall as the other structure. I also have some different windows. So this one it's kind of a yellowish with the lighting inside, and then these ones don't have much lighting. So let me show you the how the script is the component looks like. So I'm in the scene view right now and, and you can see that on the side I have the inspector. So the way that it's organized and I'm giving a lot of credit to Jake Fletcher who is a programmer, it's an amazing programmer that has been helping me with this. He's been doing the majority of this. So if you have any further questions that I might not be able to to answer through this video let me know and and you know we can always i'm always going to be able to i might do a video with jake so where we go into more in depth so let me let me tell you what i know right now and we can we can answer any questions if you have them so if i go right now i have what we call a structure script and and the structure script is basically has two different components one is going to be the random settings. So this is gonna determine, you know, the seed, what the base width, the base depth is gonna be, and how many how many floors I want to have, because I only want to have a maximum of nine, and then the the floor fall off. So basically, some of these components are constrained. So if I generate a if I generate a building, I don't want that building to be you know to be enormous. If I'm you know if I'm teaching the player how to play the game. I want I want the building to be very simple and maybe it's not as, it's not as tall and big if I'm if I need to demo, uh, demolish a building. So if I go to the game view and I hit play, I'll show you how I can change some of these values in runtime. So you can see that, that some of these values are already preset and if I change the width, I can actually change the width in runtime and you see it in the in the game view. I can also change the depth I can go all the way down and you can see a very tiny structure. I can say, okay, I only want, you know, a maximum of one floor. This might be, you know, level one. And, and this is a really good example of, you know, if you need to increment the difficulty of a level and you, you, you start to, you know, teach the player how to play the game. So I might include maybe, maybe a hallway with a garage in a much later level because you know, for some reason, maybe maybe the level in the level I need to destroy the car, or I need to do something, or I need to savage the car, or or you know save the car and sell it. So we're experimenting with some of the mechanics that we're gonna have in the game. But if I want to go back to a taller level, then I can do that. I can also change. So if I go doors, so if I only want you know I only want one main one main door, then I set that value to zero. But when I have a lot of doors for some reason, then I can increment that value. I can also do, so if I, let me go to a much bigger building. So we have a very big building. Let me go and crank up the, the floors. So if I change the windows, 
So I don't want to have that many windows. Maybe this is a gel or something like that. And maybe no doors. And I go to the scene view, you can kind of see that I have no windows and this is a very basic structure. And if I want to start adding some doors, so you can kind of see the balcony show up with with doors. You can also add, you know, start to add more windows. And maybe I crank down some of the floors. And I also have what we call a generate random. So if we don't want to have to control this through here, I can click on generate random and it's gonna generate each time a random building. So if I go back to my game view, which is pretty much what, what the space key is doing. So if I hit space, except the space key is gonna do a destruction and, and construction effect. So if I hit space one more time, you can see how how that's working, which I, I honestly really love the destruction and construction effect that, that really gives the, the game more, more depth. And it, it really keeps you connected, like, uh, you know, I, I keep doing it and I, and I can do this all day, to be honest. And I know a lot of people in, in social media were really enjoying, enjoying that effect. So the other thing that I wanted to show you was, you know, now that you know I have, you know, we have random settings, which is a, script, a scriptable object. We also have what we call a theme because I don't want to have, you know, all the buildings be the same, you know, same look and feel. I may want to have different, you know, different walls. One might be concrete, one might not be concrete, or I may want to have, you know, different type of, you know, look and feel for the building. So we added what we call a test theme and, and sorry, not a test theme, a theme that is also a scriptable object, but it allows you to modify more values. So I can tell, you know, I can tell the system that, let me go back into and generate a new random, a more interesting structure. So I can actually change, so if I wanna add the foundation, maybe this is gonna be a building that is on the air. We have what we call a foundation height where I can control, I can control that. This might be, you know, this might be a foundation that it's much taller and I may want to have maybe an entrance that where I have stairs going down. So that's why we added, you know, that, that's why we added that foundation height. And for the cell unit unit height, I can actually space it out. I can change it, and I can also change the the cell unit height if I wanted to. And, and that's gonna play well depending on you know the sizing of your of your prefabs. And so I can play with the unit size, and I can also play with the with the height. So let me undo some of those values and go back into generating a new random building. Perfect. So if I, for instance, if I want to add a different wall, if I want to add a different door, each of these ones are, are controlled by prefabs. If I want to have a, a, a new window, a roof, a, a balcony, and, the, and so on. And if we want to add new types, we can also modify, modify the, the script to accept some of those. So the other thing that I, that I can do also is for the runtime run structure randomizer, which is what you're doing, when when I hit the space key, I can increment the construction duration. So if I want to say, okay, this is going to be a very slow construction duration. So I can hit space and you can actually see everything running in, you know, a slow motion, which is, it gives the game a really cool, really cool look. Or I can, I can basically crank it, crank it down and do it very fast. So if I go back here, I actually stop it. Hit play and change that value to a much lower number. So I can say, okay, I want it to be very, very fast. And kind of see if you're doing testing, it's really gonna help for, you know, for the level designer to determine which levels and how they're gonna look like and, you know, what type of randomization you're getting. And if I wanna go, you know, back to maybe one, looks more realistic. There we go. Let's go back to 0.5. Awesome. So, so let me show you if I wanted to change, for instance, how the maybe how the walls look like. So you see that I have a prefab called basic wall, and I'm gonna stop the the game from playing, and we can go back into the same view. 
So I'm going, I'm going to open the which I'm on basic wall right now. And you kind of see it's very simple. There's not much to it. So, but maybe on this wall, I may want to, I don't know, maybe I may want to increment the, you know, one of the edges and I can do something like that. Something about like that works. And I may want to change the material on this so we can actually go in and change the wall material. I can say, okay, this is gonna be, you know, this is gonna be a dark, a dark building. Maybe a, maybe a darker gray. I can go back and you can kind of see how some of those are already changing. So if I go back to my play, my game view, hit play, and give it a second here. You can kind of see now I'm getting, getting a different look. I can see that some of the columns that I added, the edges, they're starting to come out. So if I go back to some of, some of those walls, so you can find, let me do, let me hit play one more time, a space one more time. So we can see, get a different look. You kind of see that some of those are coming out. So like this one right here, that's one of the walls that we, that we modify and so what if you don't want to you know what if you don't want to modify the material and you may want to add a new you know a new theme and that's that's the concept of of creating you know creating creating a different data descriptable object so so what i can do here is i can change okay maybe maybe on this theme it's going to be more of a, a dark theme so I can duplicate that theme and we can go here and say, okay, this is gonna be my dark building theme, dark building theme. And I can simply go into my prefabs and let's go into models. Actually, let's go back into, let's go back into my structure uh, and grab the wall. Okay, mo so model, basic themes, basically the location where you're gonna have your prefab. So I may want to have a different window. So this one, I'm going to duplicate it. And this one is going to be, maybe we'll just call this one a dark wall. Dark wall, perfect. And you can see that now I have two windows. So on this window, I can create a new material. So if we go back into my wall materials, let me, let me find it. And which is going to be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the wall material. Now we should have wall one and we can say, okay, this one is going to be wall dark. And on the wall dark material, I'm going to, so I'm going to do the same thing that I, that I had, except I'm going to assign a different, a different material to that. And I'm going to assign it to each one of these components that I already have in there. And on the material, I'm going to say, okay, I want this wall to be very dark. I can even change some of these different settings, the metallic, the specular highlights, if I wanted to. So perfect. Now let's go back into our test data or or test theme, dark building theme. And in the dark building theme, I'm gonna do so instead of doing a basic wall, I'm gonna do a dark wall. And if we go into our dark wall and select it, you can see that that's gonna be a much darker wall. I can in fact just add it. We're actually looking at it. Perfect. And if we go back into a structure and I change these, instead of doing the test theme, I'm going to change the theme that we have associated with this. And I'm going to do just change this and select the dark building theme. You can see that it already is changing and you can see some of the settings in the, in the inspector on their dark building theme. So now I can control what the theme is gonna look like. I didn't need to modify the, the other theme. So if I wanna go back to my other theme and simply just select it, you can see that, that it's, it's not changing. So let's go into our dark and then just play our game one more time. And you can see that I have the darker theme and everything it's getting, it's getting applied correctly. I can click on generate random and we can see all the changes. So that's basically what I wanted to show you today. We, we still have a lot to do in this with this script and 
also adding some different types of you know uh, prefabs to to the to the script so if you guys have any questions about what i show you let me know through the comments and don't forget to share and subscribe to the channel thank you guys